For over two decades, Elon Musk's private space exploration company, SpaceX, has been working on an ambitious plan to establish human civilization on Mars. This audacious plan has progressed in leaps and bounds over the years, with the development of several advanced spacecraft that may eventually transport man onto the surface of the Red Planet. But there's a little problem. A recent discovery made by NASA has the potential to derail the billionaire's plans. What did NASA see up there, and how will it alter everything Elon Musk has worked for? Join us as we explore the discovery by NASA that will change Elon Musk's plans and the colonized the Red Planet, Elon Musk's Mars vision. It takes one man with a crazy idea to change the world, and this man might be Elon Musk. His mischievous shenanigans online aside, this billionaire is a huge visionary with a dream so big many people consider it absolutely impossible. Now get this, what if within the present decade, human civilization extends beyond the shores of our planet onto other worlds that were previously deemed uninhabitable for humans? How insane would that be? Well, not too insane for Elon Musk, at least. Here's the craziest part. This vision to colonize the Martian surface isn't a far-fetched idea or a sci-fi inspired illusion, not in the least. Elon's obsession with Mars first came to public view in 2001 and from 2007, it was full throttle, as concrete plans and steps were taken to ensure the possibility of this mission. Although the initial plan was to begin the construction of a functioning civilization on Mars by the mid-2020s, this mission faced some hurdles that made that goal practically impossible. However, Elon has set a new goal, which is as crazy as the initial one. This new goal is to begin construction of a megacity on Mars by 2029. Now, think about that for a second. If there is the slightest possibility that this vision becomes reality, it could be the single most monumental thing humans have ever done. Sure, we've launched satellites into outer space that have stayed there for years. We've also built functional space stations that remain objects of marvel to the unknown world, if they can see us. Our space explorations have even taken us to the moon, and our advanced telescopes have exposed our bare eyes to the vast expanse of outer space, deepening our understanding of the universe. However, all these monumental strides will definitely be dwarfed when we can achieve the one single thing that has eluded us, which is colonizing another planetary body apart from ours. Elon does not just want to send a bunch of scientists and explorers to Mars. No, the vision is way bigger than that. Elon's vision is to build a city filled with ordinary humans that seek to live among the stars, beyond the shores of our green planet. So, what is this Martian city Elon Musk keeps talking about? Get ready to have your mind blown as we lift off to Mars and explore the proposed Mars city and all its juicy details. The Mars City Some billionaires acquire private islands, while some lavish their billions on private mansions and properties, but for the richest man in the world, these simply aren't enough. Elon Musk craves something more interstellar, something more interplanetary. His vision is to build a full-size city capable of accommodating millions of people on the Martian surface. This city isn't just some research station filled with lab samples and research equipment. Mars City would look, feel, and function like your normal earthly city, except just millions of miles away from the green planet. For the lucky humans who will be fortunate enough to call Mars home, they'll definitely not miss anything over here. Mars City will feature every facility typical of an earthly city. Hospitals, schools, parks, restaurants, movie theaters, bars, hotels, and many more amenities will be available for Mars citizens. But here's the problem. Elon Musk is a billionaire and can probably afford to fly anywhere he wants. But if his plans really include other regular everyday people, how will they be able to afford the millions of dollars the trip to Mars requires? For this problem, Elon has a simple solution. Everyone interested in moving to Mars will be able to pay for their flight with a loan. This loan will then be gradually paid off by working in the numerous facilities available in the city, from iron foundries to pizzerias. What a splendid idea, right? If properly executed, this could be a saving grace for our dying planet. These plans sound good and all, but there's a controversial part to all of these. You see, according to Elon, Mars City will be free to govern itself, draw its own constitution, and create its own laws. 
According to the Starlink Internet Service terms and conditions released in October 2020, this city will gain absolute autonomy and will not be under the influence of any earthly government. But the government doesn't really want to agree with this idea. You see, according to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, the launch origin country is responsible for subsequent space activities, so the United States will likely be the ruling government in charge of Mars City. But will the SpaceX CEO agree with this regulation? Are we about to witness an interplanetary power tussle, the likes of which have not been witnessed since the inception of human civilization? How all these will play out still remains to be seen. Cost of building Mars City. You're probably thinking, hey, this plan sounds good and all, but it's probably going to be super expensive. And you're definitely right. Building a city on Mars is no mean feat. In 2019, Elon Musk estimated that it would take 1 million tons of cargo to build a self-sustaining Mars city. Let's do a little maths here. Assuming it costs about $100,000 to send a ton of cargo to Mars with the upcoming Starship launch vehicle, that puts our production cost at about $100 billion. That's less than half of Elon Musk's net worth, so it's probably not a problem. The Starship. So how will we eventually be transported to Mars? According to Elon Musk, the revolutionary Starship spacecraft designed by SpaceX will play a vital role in this mass migration. Currently, Starship is the most powerful launch vehicle ever developed and is capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons fully reusable and 250 metric tons expendable. Thousands of these Starship spacecraft will convey both man and material to Mars in a form of interplanetary travel that has never been observed in the history of the universe. A Starship stands at 394 feet tall and measures about 30 feet in diameter. Each Starship is capable of carrying up to 100 people on long-duration interplanetary flights. Now comes the best part. The Starship is perfectly reusable, which means it can be used on more than one mission to or from the Red Planet. A fleet of these revolutionary spacecraft are currently being built, and in a not-so-distant future, interplanetary trips could be as easy as international flights. Why leave Earth? Humans originated from this planet millions of years ago. Earth has always been home to us, as well as the multitude of other animals and plant species that make up our ecosystem. So why move? Why do we need to leave our green planet in search of another round floating rock in the solar system to call home? To answer this question, you must understand that the vision to colonize Mars is not just driven by the wild imaginations of one man, but by necessity. According to Elon Musk, humans don't just want to go to Mars, we need to. This step isn't just a bid to claim bragging rights or mount a monument on Mars like with the moon landing. No, it goes way deeper than that. Our mass migration to Mars is essential for the survival of the human race. So why does Elon Musk think we need to move to Mars in order to survive, you ask? The lifeboat theory. The Earth is dying and we are the only ones that can save the rest of the species. Humans are the most advanced species on Earth. Unless there's another undiscovered species hidden somewhere on Earth, we're probably the only ones that can build spaceships to conduct a massive exodus in the case of catastrophic events. In case you don't know, our planet is gradually edging towards a disastrous trajectory that might lead to the end of all life on Earth as we know it. News about the damaging effects of climate change on our planet isn't new anymore. Floodings, forest fires, unstable weather conditions, and recurrent disasters, all these serve as indicators of the dire state of our planet. Therefore, it is essential to seek new lands to establish our dominance if we want to preserve the rich variety of plants and animal species contained on our planet. Then there's the growing threat of an unanticipated event, like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Scientists predict that there is a high probability of such an event recurring any time from now. In reality, it's not a question of it, but when a massive meteorite will hit Earth, leading to the end of all life, including all plants and animals. These growing concerns necessitate our exploration of other planets as our next place of habitation. Humans are the lifeboats of all living organisms on Earth and their survival depends solely on us in the case of a catastrophe. Advancement in space exploration. Beyond the necessity of ensuring the survival of the human species and other living organisms on our planet, there is the thrill of living on another planet to inspire us. 
How cool would it be to wake up on Mars, to walk around, eat, party, drive around, work, and experience life on Mars? This could be the singular most monumental thing any human has ever done. If the survival of our species doesn't inspire you, this one definitely should. If the moon landing could generate such a huge buzz and remains one of the most exciting events in the history of mankind, imagine the impact of a successful colonization of Mars. When this huge goal has finally been achieved, we can indeed say that nothing is impossible. Conquering Mars will also expose the possibility of conquering other planets and making them inhabitable for humans and other earthly living species. Who knows? Maybe we can even conquer other solar systems and reach the depths of the universe once thought to be forbidden. The possibilities are endless. But why Mars? If you're a curious cat like everyone else, you're probably wondering why Elon Musk chose Mars as the designated destination for the next advancement in human civilization. Is Elon some alien masquerading as a human with an agenda to relocate humans to the Martian surface to serve as slaves to the extraterrestrial overlords? While this sounds like a good plot for a sci-fi blockbuster, Elon's reasons are quite more logical. For one, Mars is considered as the most inhabitable planet in our solar system. That is apart from the Earth, of course. Although Hollywood depictions of the Martian surface portray an image of a threatening wasteland, the Red Planet is a quite a top candidate for human resettlement. Though not as inhabitable as our dear green planet from where our species originated, certain conditions on Mars make it potentially habitable for our fragile species, as well as other species who will accompany us on our interplanetary voyage. So, what makes Mars stand out from other planets in our solar system? Pay attention as we examine those unique factors one by one. The Presence of Water 70% of the Earth is made up of water, so there's definitely no need to speak too much about its absolute essentiality for human survival. The Martian surface, although barren, is filled with enough water to submerge the entire planet to a depth of over 114 feet, although the water supply is mostly trapped in ice. Unmanned exploration of the Red Planet has revealed several unknown features that might contribute to the success of this Mars resettlement plan. For example, the Korolev Crater, a large crater located on Mars's North Pole, is estimated to hold a massive volume of water ice, up to 1.8 kilometers thick. Now that's pretty massive. This water supply will definitely play a huge role in the survival of our species, accompanying animal species, and the plant species that will be essential for our feeding. Essential Plant Nutrients Speaking of plants, the soil on the Martian surface has also been revealed to contain many essential nutrients needed for plant growth. Although not in the purest form as on Earth, the presence of these nutrients will be an invaluable asset when we eventually colonize the planet. The amount of plant nutrients in the Martian soil, however, depends on the geographical location, and the soil may have to be remediated in order to remove the toxic perchlorates before earthly plants can be able to survive on the Red Planet. The Martian Atmosphere What's more important than food and water? Air, of course. Without breathable oxygen, our plans for Mars colonization may remain a fantasy, but there's a glimmer of hope. Get this, even though it is quite sparse, Mars has an atmosphere. Although it is primarily made up of carbon dioxide, this can be easily converted to oxygen through a relatively simple process. In 2021, the National Aeronautics Science Administration, NASA, announced that it was able to successfully make oxygen from the carbon dioxide prevalent in the thin Martian atmosphere. This brings us closer and closer to actualizing our dream of building a working civilization on Mars. So, there's no need to be scared of the toxic atmosphere on Mars. We'll be able to breathe free just like here on Earth. Availability of raw resources. Not every material that will be used in building this Mars city will be sourced from Earth. Researchers have discovered a way to compress the Martian soil, also known as regolith, into bricks for construction, without the need for any additives. This will definitely play a huge part in the development of human Martian civilization. Regolith can also be combined with sulfur, a material which is very abundant on Mars to form concrete. What's more, 
Through another energy-intensive process, iron can also be extracted from the Martian soil. So the Red Planet isn't just some barren wasteland, but a lavish landscape filled with minerals essential for the survival of human civilization. Gravity. This one is quite interesting. Research into the conditions on Mars has revealed that the Red Planet has 62.5% less gravity than Earth. So how will humans cope in such an environment? Because the human colonization of Mars isn't just a scientific experiment meant to last for a couple of months or years. No, we may end up living on Mars for the rest of our existence as a species, so it is very essential that we consider the implications of the reduced gravity on human physiology. Fortunately, scientists predict that the effects may be quite negligible. By studying the health effects of reduced gravity on astronauts who spend consecutive years in space, we have been able to deduce that the human body is highly resilient to the spaceflight environment. So gravity shouldn't be a problem. That is, as long as we don't accidentally end up floating into the endless expanse of outer space. Temperature. Think summer is hot on Earth? Why not move to Mars? You should know that the red planet is quite cold and you might experience an average temperature of minus 62 degrees Celsius. This is pretty cold, maybe even a little too cold. But fear not, this shouldn't be too hard to manage for humans. After all, there are cities here on Earth that experience such terrifyingly low temperatures. Human habitats on Earth will likely be designed to keep out the extreme cold. Plus, of course, there'll be a fireplace and some hot cocoa to chase the bitter cold away. Similar day and night cycle. When you consider some of the conditions on Mars, it sometimes seems that humanity was destined to exist on Mars, as well as the Earth. For one, our day and night cycles are quite similar. A day on Mars is approximately 24 hours and 40 minutes. Now, that's a negligible difference. This is good news because our circadian rhythms are modulated by the duration of exposure to light. Having the same length of day as on Earth will play an important role in maintaining a healthy lifestyle on Earth, as well as serving as an invaluable factor in the success of our agricultural system on the Red Planet. The Challenge Forget about how easy this sounds in theory. Conquering the Martian landscape is no mean feat. As it stands, no manned exploration has been successfully launched to Mars. The little we know about this planet have been transmitted by landers, orbitals, and our robotic explorers, which have been traversing the landscape for many years now. On June 10, 2003, NASA launched a Mars exploration rover known as Spirit, and it eventually touched down on the Martian surface on January 3, 2004. The second rover opportunity was launched on July 7 and arrived on the Red Planet on January 24, three weeks after Spirit. Together, these two rovers have explored the planet in search for signs of the existence of life forms. Then there's Curiosity, the largest and most advanced rover NASA has ever sent to Mars. But why have we been unable to send a man to Mars? And what are the challenges that our proposed colonization of Mars might face? Let's dive in. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Have you ever considered the possibility that maybe the naysayers are right? Maybe our planned expedition to Mars is just an overambitious project. What if, while trying to save our species from extinction, we embark on a trip that ultimately wipes us out? What if in the quest for survival, we expose ourselves to a bitter, unforgiving landscape that ultimately spells the end of our species as we know it? Although creating a human civilization seems like a good idea, we need to consider the risks involved in such an endeavor. What do you think? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. Radiation. Think Chernobyl is bad? You should see the radiation in the Martian atmosphere. You won't believe what Elon Musk and NASA just found on Mars. Exploring Mars comes with a significant risk, considering the fact that the natural radiation on the red planet is significantly higher than that of Earth. The thin atmosphere, coupled with the absence of a magnetosphere, makes the red planet a radioactive hell. To put this into perspective, the average natural radiation level on Earth is 24 to 30 rads, which is about 20 to 50 times the average natural radiation level on Earth. There are essentially two types of radiation that astronauts are likely to experience while exploring Mars. One is the galactic cosmic rays, or GCRs, and the other is solar energetic particles, or SEPs, related. What are GCRs, you ask? Grab your writing materials because it's time for a science lesson. 
Galactic cosmic rays are charged particles which possess high energy and high penetrating ability. It is extremely difficult to shield against these GCRs due to their remarkable penetrating ability. GCRs are mainly composed of about 85% protons, 13% atomic particles, and the remaining 2% is filled with the nuclei of elements with atomic numbers greater than 2. This form of radiation will not only penetrate the bulkhead of the manned spacecraft cockpit, but also cause serious damage to the tissues and organs when it comes in contact with the human body. SEPs, on the other hand, are related to solar eruptions. These solar eruptions include solar flares and coronal mass ejections, which can heat plasma and accelerate particles up to a few GeVs. SEPs mainly emit protons and electrons, followed by alpha particles, and then a few particles with atomic numbers greater than three. These high levels of radiation pose significant risks to our dream of Mars occupation. However, Elon Musk and SpaceX are continually working around the clock in order to perfect technology that will protect both plants and animals from the devastating effects of these radiations. By the time humans populate the Martian landscape, these advanced gadgets will not only protect the precious earthly lives from the radiation, but we might even be able to harness the power of these radiations to better our lives on the Martian surface. The Water Dilemma Sure, there's lots of water trapped as ice on the red planet, but how do we harness the water to ensure our survival on the planet? If humans will live extensively on Mars to a long time, and if we plan to cultivate the Martian soil to grow our food, we must find a way to build a working water supply on the planet. To solve this huge dilemma, scientists have come up with a couple of creative solutions. Are you excited to find out what these solutions are? Pay attention, because this will definitely blow your mind. If you're like everybody else, the first solution that will probably pop up in your head is, why don't we just bring our water with us from Earth? While this may seem like a creative solution, it is very impractical. Water is way too heavy to be carried from Earth to Mars, on a journey that might take nearly a year, so that option is definitely out. Scientists have, however, proposed a simple yet complex solution. Since there's water on Mars already, why don't we just find a way to make it usable for humans? But then, there's another problem. Most regions where the ice caps of Mars are located are currently impossible to explore. This is due to the immense amount of energy required to keep both man and machine alive in those regions. Our current Mars explorations have been limited to the mid-latitude regions, where temperatures are considerably milder. Unfortunately, there is no ice on the surface in these regions, although there is ice below the ground. Now, unless we will be sending astronauts with shovels to sample every patch of dirt on the planet, we might need to come up with a more creative solution. The final answer was provided by Gareth Morgan and then Putzig of the Planetary Science Institute. These two brilliant scientists, along with their colleagues, have combined 20 years of data obtained from five different Mars orbital instruments to create a digital map in order to locate where the ice caps are located in the hospitable regions. If this mission is successful, it might play a pivotal role in identifying the prime location for a water source, which might be the singular determining factor of whether our dream of Mars colonization will remain theoretical or if it will be achievable. So how do we extract the ice and convert it to usable water? To combat this problem, NASA and other international space agencies are working on developing advanced tools. These tools will be useful for both radar mapping, for determining the depth at which the ice is located, as well as the extraction process. One day we might even be able to create artificial rivers and seas on the surface of the red planet. Who knows? Extraterrestrial life. Although it may seem like a slim possibility, the existence of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations on Mars may also pose a threat to our desire for another world. What if Mars isn't an empty landscape? What if there are strange creatures, the likes of which we have never seen, living on the surface of the Red Planet, or maybe even beneath the surface? What if by trying to escape our home, we are consequently invading the homes of other beings? What effect would that have on our existence on the planet? While there has been no established proof of the presence of advanced life on Mars, we must keep in mind that our explorations of the planet have been very limited, so we don't really know everything there is to know. Wild speculations and conspiracy theories abound, 
which suggests that on the occasion that Mars is inhabited by an advanced alien species, our exploration of the planet could be tantamount to an invasion. The repercussions of such scenarios remain to be seen. The Dangers of Martian Dust What if our greatest undoing in our quest for interplanetary existence wasn't the big things, but the small, infinitesimal things like the Martian dust? Here's something that might interest you. For the longest time since man started dreaming of establishing a human society on Mars, the dangers posed by Martian dust have been of huge concern. According to research, the dust has been found to react with small amounts of water to produce highly reactive molecules, which are known to cause lung diseases in humans, including cancer. This poses a significant health risk to all Mars explorers and might serve as a spoke in the wheel of our progress towards conquering the Red Planet. No known solution has been proffered towards solving this problem. However, we believe that Elon Musk and the SpaceX team are working on a revolutionary technology that will help prevent a mass disease outbreak that might spell doom for the ambitious mission to Mars. All these and many more factors remain a subject of growing concern, as Elon Musk's dream of life on Mars edges closer and closer. But there's good news. Although these problems seem insurmountable, they aren't. As huge as these hurdles are, experts believe that humans will likely find a way around them using our creative imagination and the power of science. Stephen Hawking's Predictions But do we really need to move to Mars? Is our planned colonization of Mars a viable alternative to our continued existence on our planet? According to theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, yes. As a matter of fact, Hawking predicted that humans need to begin our interplanetary journey within 100 years in order to keep our species alive. Although humans are far from being endangered species, we might be on the brink of extinction as the Earth becomes more and more inhospitable for our species. Hawking theorized that there is a high chance of a catastrophic event occurring on Earth within the next 1,000 or 10,000 years. Therefore, expanding our existence beyond the green planet gives us the best chance of survival. Climate change, overdue asteroid strikes, epidemics, and explosion in population will all contribute to the possible demise of our species, unless we pack up our bags and leave as soon as we can. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.